What is going on, TRKA? So, um, yesterday's video, I think we're playing out picture perfect right now. Um, I'm going to show you why I think that. Um, I made a comment on Weeble, and I think that's playing out as well. We're going to look at the Ortex. I'll tell you why, and we will consider those two aspects. With the market cap sitting the way it is, is why I continue to have faith in TRKA. We're going to go over that as well. So, with all of that said, you guys know this is not financial advice. In case you can't read from all of the disclaimers that pop up before the video, it's just for your entertainment purposes. I can't guarantee you what's going to happen. I create a narrative. I talk to my audience about a narrative that I've created. That's my theory. That's my thesis. It doesn't make sense to everybody. It doesn't have to. Stick to your trading plan, not mine. So what am I looking at? Well, we've had our fib line, right? right here around the 20 cent level we knew 19 to 20 was hopefully going to hold be a tight channel and if it doesn't things are going to get ugly right now we are sitting right there right at the point and um, we're going to see how this plays out what i like i'm going to tell you what i like i like that the market cap currently is sitting around 68 right 68 million what I like is the news article that says that uh, this should be worth way more than that as far as the market cap goes. What I like is that's where it kind of got a, a 59 cent run from last time whenever people were saying it's undervalued. We have the financials now in stone, in writing, and we have something to work with which says potentially we're right. But does that mean that the price is going to reflect that in the charts? Not necessarily. That's why we protect our accounts to the downside. If it gets ugly, if it gets past your threshold, you can always get back in. It's easier to get back in than it is to DCA. Keep that in mind. There's no problem with cutting and running whenever you have reached your threshold thinking what if what if what if right there's always another opportunity whenever you see that happen but i'm still here i am now eight times what i intended to be into trka do not that that be any kind of inclination as to what you do i have a dedicated account for my stock trading and then the rest is options this week i'm not trading options because i do not want to get blown out with fomc and i just don't care uh, it, you take a you take a few days off you take a week off hey sometimes you need a vacation that's what you do whenever you're working a real job you'll take your vacation days you'll take that time off whenever you need it or whenever it makes sense to and these kind of weeks they just make sense to me um I mean, I've made a couple of scalps, but I'm I'm not playing any real significant money as far as that goes. So just kind of sitting here patiently waiting. I'm going to see what this week brings in TRKA as long as it does not get rejected. What have I done? All right, let's get into the charts. I've bumped. So we extended this trend line because it made sense before. What I did was I bumped this trend line up now because I think that makes sense. If we look back here, we can see a little hesitation where it, you know, thought about what it wanted to do. Um, so we use that. We connect the dots. Bang, 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 and now bang. So we're at a very crucial point, which we thought we would be in the last video come Tuesday. If they want to hold us here, are we going to make this breakout, retest, push, and then our fib line act as some sort of support for us? Or are we going to get crushed down to a lower level? Now a deeper dive could be in store for us, but we'll look at the RSI. So I always say the the RSI and the FIB, I, I will trade those two indicators over almost any indicator out there. Um, it's, it's a pretty reliable source if you combine those two. It doesn't always work, but it does tell you where your risk to reward situations could be in play. Right, if you're coming down... On a support, you're oversold, your RSI is in the dirt. What does that tell you? That tells you that this level of the FIB could be a nice area of support and want to push back to the upside. If you are, say, overbought and you're coming up to a FIB level and you know it's going to be resistance and you see the RSI is running hot, what does that tell you? That tells you this could be an area where we see things back off. 
Fibonacci knows something and RSI usually doesn't lie. Sometimes it lies, but usually um, if you combine those two and you learn how to use them well, you'll become a pretty decent trader. Um, you're, we're, this isn't a moon channel. We don't ever look for the moon. Uh, we just take it one step at a time. So we see how those two are correlating, right? Are we oversold at a support? Are we overbought at a resistance? That tells you what your move is because we trade channel to channel. It's not about holding for dear life because a lot of times we can make 20, 50, 100 percent just flipping channels. And it just is what it is. Um, some of you guys are, are getting on board with that. I, I see in the comments that you come back and you're like, yeah, I, I took my money here. And I'm so happy for that because that tells me that maybe my thesis my theories are coming through to defeat the fact that you don't have to always hold and 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 watch money come and go and come and go and come and go and whenever i see that that makes me happy that tells me you guys are pairing up some of these nice indicators that are easy to use and everybody has access to you can use it on Webull. I use TradingView just for trading because I do have a few other indicators that I will throw in there, right? Um, I, I like to see, are, are we oversold? Are we overbought? What are we doing? Where's our volume profile? All of those things. Uh, but I, I mean, Webull has all of that potential as well. It's just nothing that I use for real charting. Uh, I, I do use it for trading. I mean, it's free for... It's free for options unless you're trading SPX, and then it's basically free still because we'll lose that or make that in, uh, you know, five seconds. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, be watching. All right, uh, I just rambled on, but just setting you up for the week and what we have looking for. Um, be watching what's going to happen right here. We're either making our breakout or we're making our breakdown. There's there's just no other scenario that this goes. And uh, you're going to know by, let's say, 1 o'clock market time. It is 1240 right now. Uh, I guess it could go a little bit further than that, right? We, we, could, we could see a false sense of a breakdown and then a climb. Or we could see a real breakdown. Uh, you're sitting kind of neutral on the five minutes. So that's... That could go either way. Even with the one hour, we're sitting kind of neutral. The four hour, um, kind of trending a little bit to the downside. But let's look in at the RSIs because, like I said, these are what we like to look at. Here's our bounce point, right? Our red line. Where are we? We are grinding our way just slowly, ever slowly, right down to it. Rejecting off the SMA, so I want to see what happens here, which would put us a little bit later in the day. Um, as far as the one hour, we are grinding right on the RSI. We have not attempted to break that SMA as far as the moving goes. Um, everything looks okay as long as we don't give this up. If this wants to be a bounce point, I'm okay with that. The 30 minute, I've kind of been watching closely because, it, I, I mean, in my opinion, we're grinding up. You can see our red line here is our grind line. We are grinding up ever so slowly, but it's not getting the heat that it needs as far as the short time frame goes. But the grind up shows me a little bit of divergence that is going on as far as the price action and the RSI. So we're getting that buying pressure that's coming in. I just don't know if or when or how long they will support soaking up that supply that's what we're going to find out here very soon um i don't know if this video will upload before this time comes but um, i'm trying to get it done just so that we can all be on uh, you know a, a, a thought process here what i said today on weeble was i have seen this action in the charts way too many times to be fooled by it and i think ftds are getting settled now i have a theory that ftds are they shouldn't belong in the markets in the first place but in the second place whenever we see ftds here's my theory what does the market maker have to do 
in order to not be underwater, they have to short the market, and the market maker will do that. So they short the market, right? Get the price down to where they need to be at to cover. So when they're covering, they're also shorting, right? Cover short, cover short, cover short, cover short. We see the quick spikes up and down, up and down, like high frequency trading would do. And they are not underwater, they're covering their FTDs, they're getting off the threshold list. And then from there, what happens? Well, then we get back to natural, normal price discovery. Now let's see if Jeffries is soaking up the supply down here at 20 cents. We've been setting a pretty decent base right there between 20 and spot 2001. Somebody's soaking up the supply, whether it's the, the market makers that are short you know shorting and covering so getting rid of those ftds and just high frequency trading or or possibly jeffries is buying right here soaking up the supply so that they have a pretty nice average whenever they try to break us out of this 25 to 28 cent range um, i don't know exactly how it's going to go it could be that we get a pretty hard rejection after this but um, I'm just telling you we're going to be off the threshold list and we will look at the ortex and I'll show you that um, I, I have a theory and this is why I stick to my theory because I think I'm right and I'm going to show you why I think I'm so right um, but again I am not perfect I'm not a perfect trader I don't know everything about the markets I just watch tickers long enough and I follow tickers long enough that I learn the personality of those tickers and I learn the personality of how they get off of the threshold list and it is what it is um, so let's look at it right now I already pretty much told you what we're looking at to break out of if we can get that breakout 2186 2316 then get back into our 25 to 28 cent range we got to break out of that 28 cents and we have to hold it as support that's going to be key aspect number one our volume dies off like I said below 2250 we've been seeing some low volume which is okay maybe market makers are sending most orders off of exchange right now because they are settling those FTDs or have settled those FTDs and they just don't need any outside influence while they do that so that's another avenue that we look at but the volume seems to be stepping up considerably from what we've seen say back here in the last day or two right we we have a significant more amount of volume that's coming in even though we are below that 2250 so somebody's buying somebody's selling somebody's doing something so this isn't a critical level um, 19 to 20 is an absolute critical level we look at the ortex what do you notice there's no red indication that we are on the threshold list why not because of what i just told you um it's one of those things that uh, we hate to see as retail, but uh, I do think that they have probably settled what they needed to settle. And that's okay because we, I don't ever think FTDs are going to send anything to the upside. If I see FTDs, that immediately tells me we're going down, right? Uh, it's just the way it is it's the honest truth in the matter if you look back at anything with ftds um occasionally outside of maybe what we saw a couple of years ago and the hype and everything around say gme amc those were anomalies is that anonym anomalies anomalies so those were uh, like rare instances in the market but now I think they have a better hold on those but at the same time our cost to borrow average is still relatively high 119.34 it says short interest has come in just a little bit stronger which again would make sense if they're taking it off the FTD list right they're clearing out off the threshold list I'm telling you the market makers have to short it so would the market makers short it to be able to cover these yes what do they do from there possibly they go long because uh, the price is going to increase and they also you know a double dip so to speak so they made a little bit of money covering their ftds shorting it and then going long with the crowd um, we're going to see how that goes utilization 32.68 um, again 
the numbers are not aligning for me as far as what we're seeing in utilization and cost to borrow average but I don't I don't know um, I don't know how Jeffries operates um, if they're accumulating and trying to do something then uh, probably their accumulated shares are not on loan which could throw this off right there there could be um, an immense amount more shares that or Jeffries could be holding that is not being loaned out which is driving this cost to borrow average up so we'll keep an eye on that as well um, but right now I guess I've rambled on long enough that we are getting to that point where we're going to decide is this going to break to the upside is it going to break out or is it going to break down you can see as I'll zoom in here right here for you but we have a decision to make that decision is going to be made today in my opinion and I think we see what happens because like I said I think we're off the threshold list as far as I can tell I think um, I think there's a lot of accumulation going on here if you've been watching the level twos at say 20 cents there's a a lot of action that's going on right there so if somebody's accumulating at 20 cents once all of this nefarious market maker stuff is done which way does it go we're going to find out um, also keep an eye on GME earnings so right now it could be running into earnings right buy the rumor sell the news type of thing what happens with GME AMC runs ape runs your your basket meme stocks run so if you're trading those keep an eye on those um, most of you guys are probably diamond handing i don't care what you do um i i, I won't tell you what i did but <laughs> i i have gma now um so uh we'll go from there i hope you guys are having a good day in the markets like i said be safe this week because there's a lot of unknowns if the 25 basis point hike comes into play I think the markets run if we go higher than that I think we see a pretty big sell-off has j Powell been bought off is he going to back off on his interest rate hikes with the failing banks he could um, it's it's a strong possibility I don't know exactly what he's going to do and uh, that's another reason that I'm just not touching a whole lot of stuff right now so we'll go from there i will catch you guys in the next one make some money as always stay golden people and may your accounts stay green